but the IRS has 10 years to collect on any tax debt, and it's 10 years from the date that it was assessed. The date that it expires is called the collection statute expiration date. When you make an appeal or request this collection CDP hearing, what happens is the time that they have to collect pauses. Now, it's nice for you because during this time that it's paused, they're not going to do any enforcement action, so they're going to hold off on actually doing the levy, they'll hold off on issuing the tax lien. But on the flip side of that, once everything clears with the CDP hearing, that time is going to get added back on at the end. Welcome to the Tax Relief with Timbaland Bowens podcast. Are you behind on taxes? Is the IRS threatening you or your business? Are you overwhelmed and confused about how to resolve your tax issues? Let's join Timbaland as she explains your options and how she may be able to help. Timbaland Bowens is America's favorite EA. Hey, family, we're here for episode 26, and it's back to business as usual. Let's get right in on some tax relief. Now, last episode, we had a little fun learning some tax 101 basics, but you really need this episode if you have been using the pray and wait method, all right? So get your head out of the sand. There's still some time to save you. In today's episode, we're going to talk about IRS collection due process. And as a disclaimer, because this is what I do in and out each day, if you hear me say CDP, I am referring to collection due process. I will try for your benefit to remember to say the whole thing, but in the event that I don't remember, that is what I'm referring to, all right? Before we get into it, I have a huge announcement to make. On tomorrow, April 8th, we are celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Tax Relief with Tim and Bowens podcast. A year ago... You know, I, of course I'm going to still be doing this in a year. It has been a lot of work, but I have enjoyed the journey. And a lot of that is because of you. I appreciate you tuning in every other week. And yeah, I look forward to continuing to do this. Now, because I only get to talk to you every other week here on the podcast, I am going to encourage you to go ahead and go to America's America'sFavoriteEA.com and sign up for the email list. I send out stuff there a little more frequently, and I'm going to have some more material coming out for you in celebration of this one-year anniversary. From this podcast, you all have been able to let me know what type of content you like and things you want to learn more about. So make sure you go ahead and sign up for that email list. Now, if you have been using the pray and wait method, you are probably sitting over there like, all right, Timlin, get to it. So make sure you have your pen and paper ready because we're going to talk about some of your rights as a taxpayer when you owe the IRS. So we have the tax filing deadline for individuals within, what, 10 days now, 11 days? And you may be looking at your 1040 thinking, I cannot file this. There's no way that I can pay it, and the IRS is either going to end up cleaning out my bank account, closing my business, and throwing me in jail. Well, before you go way down that road, there are a few stops that you can make before getting that far. One of them that I'm going to talk about today is the IRS collection due process, because you have the right to not be rushed, okay? Okay. Within the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, there are things to protect you from the IRS just coming and taking your property, from coming and cleaning out your bank account. But if you don't have these tools in your tool belt, they'll come and clean it out. All right? So with this whole due process, this is set in place to have collection actions that have been taken or been proposed looked at by appeals. So what do I mean? 
If the IRS has issued you a notice of federal tax lien filing, you have a right to have that looked at by appeals. The same with a final notice, which is the notice of intent to levy and a notice of your rights to a hearing. So whenever you get a notice like this from the IRS, you'll see that you also have a right to a hearing. Now, here's the good thing about appeals. It's a separate and independent office from the IRS. So you really do have a fair shot at them looking at what actually happened in your circumstance to make sure that the IRS followed all the rules they were supposed to before proposing levying your account. And again, I did an episode on tax levies last year towards the beginning. I just want to remind you that a levy can look different for different people. If you receive Social Security, the IRS can take part of that Social Security check before it even reaches your account. If you work and you receive wages, they can garnish your wages. They can take your state tax refund as well as your federal tax refund, all right? But from the processes that are set in place, there are things that they have to do first. There are also three other times when you can request the collection due process hearing. It'll be a notice of jeopardy levy. You'll get that right of appeal. A notice of levy on your state refund. And a notice of just a general levy, which those I don't really like because it's like, okay, what are they coming for? In order for you to make this request, you need to file a form 12153. All right. And this form is called Request for Collection Due Process Hearing or Equivalent. And I'll get to the equivalent here in a little bit. This request must be made within 30 days of the date on the notice. So I don't know about you, but here in Louisville, Kentucky, especially since we shut down with the pandemic, mail has been wonky. So you want to make sure if you get any notices from the IRS, you're not just stashing them away in a drawer. All right. We can't just put them in the Bible and say, God's going to fix it. You have to take action because remember, faith without works is dead. Putting your IRS notices in the Bible without you reading them isn't going to work. You have to actually look and see what you're up against. The whole point of me bringing up the mail being wonky, you can't respond 30 days after you receive it. You need to make sure that you've actually opened it and it has to be within 30 days of the date of the notice. Now, you are entitled to one request per tax period per action. What do I mean? If the IRS has proposed for the tax year 2017 to issue a tax lien and then later also a tax levy, for that tax period, that one year is the tax period, you have the right to request an appeal, or not an appeal, I'm sorry, to request a collection due process hearing for the lien, and you also have the right to request a collection due process hearing for the levy. Now, I haven't gone into it in a lot of detail in a while, but the IRS has 10 years to collect on any tax debt, and it's 10 years from the date that it was assessed. The date that it expires is called the collection statute expiration date. When you make an appeal or request this collection CDP hearing, what happens is the time that they have to collect pauses. Now, it's nice for you because during this time that it's paused, they're not going to do any enforcement action, so they're going to hold off on actually doing the levy. They'll hold off on issuing the tax lien. But on the flip side of that, once everything clears with the CDP hearing, that time is going to get added back on at the end, all right? So this isn't something that you do just to get rid of six months worth of time. No, if they pause for six months, that six months is going to be added on to the original CSED. So that is something that you do want to keep in mind, okay? Now, that's not to scare you. That's only so that you'll be informed, 
this request for a CDP hearing is actually a great tool because it gives you the opportunity to still tell your financial story if you've just had your head under the sand waiting for the problem to go away. Because what happens during the CDP hearing, you have the opportunity to propose collection alternatives. Because remember, any form of enforcement, such as a lien or a levy, is to get your attention and to make sure that the IRS has the ability to still get the money owed to them. So, for example, let's say you've ignored every request for payment from the IRS until receiving your notice of a levy on your state refund, okay? Once we get to the CDP hearing, you have the opportunity, and please bring receipts and paperwork. When I say receipts, I mean just proof of your ability to pay. You can propose that you actually go into an installment agreement instead of them issuing the levy on the state refund, okay? You can propose that you actually qualify for an offer and compromise and you need the time to submit that offer. You can propose that you actually fit better in currently not collectible. And if you're not familiar with currently not collectible, right before Christmas, I did an episode on how to temporarily stop enforcement actions. If you think you can't afford to pay anything right now, you need to go back and check out that episode. Just as a reminder, the nuggets are in the notes. So if you think you can't find it, it will be in the notes and there will be a link to take you directly to that episode. Now, you may be thinking, you know, this all sounds fine and dandy, but when I get on the phone with the IRS, it's nothing is fair. That's why I don't like calling them and I don't know what to do. If you disagree with the appeals determination, you can actually take this to court and appeal it. Now, hopefully for your sake, it doesn't get that far. You know, with this whole negotiation and you proposing a collection alternative, you and the IRS may actually come to agreement where something is worked out so they don't levy your account. But as I mentioned, if you disagree with the appeals determination, you can go to court to appeal. This is, once again, going to pause any collection enforcement, but this time is going to be added on to the original CSED. So if you've already requested the CDP hearing or equivalent, remember the time that that took is going to be added to the original CSED. So I should have said, if you go on to court, that's going to be added in addition to the other time that's already been added. So if we're looking at you requesting the CDP hearing, like I said, or equivalent, you need to make sure that you send your form 12153 to the address on the notice. All right? You don't want to just send this any random place. You want to go right to the office that sent the notice. If the 30 days has passed and you no longer qualify to do the request for a CDP, you can still request an equivalent hearing. You actually have one year from the date of the notice to request the equivalency hearing. It's going to also go to the address on the notice. The only downside to this, if you disagree with the appeals determination, You can't take it to court. But as I said, most people are able to get something set up during the actual hearing or the equivalency hearing. Now, options are nice to know that you have, but you may be thinking, I have the right to this, but you don't understand how much dust is on these notices, like this makes me want to crawl up you know, on the couch and just eat ice cream. Listen, you have the right to not be rushed. You have the right to due process, but you also have the right to representation. So in an earlier episode, I talked about who can actually represent you. Me, myself, I'm an enrolled agent, so I'm licensed through the IRS to handle this type of work on behalf of other taxpayers. We also have certified public accountants and tax attorneys. 
If you decide to take this to court, you will need a tax attorney. But for a collection due process hearing, you can hire a CPA or EA as, such as myself to handle this process for you. They will need to be your tax power of attorney. One thing that I don't mention a lot here, you all know I'm an enrolled agent. I handle this type of work. But if this is already making you sweat listening to this and you know you need the representation, I do still own Bowen's Tax Solutions. And this is the type of work that we specialize in. So if you were to hire a professional to submit the request for a CDP hearing, not only are they going to submit that request, they're also going to show up to the CDP hearing for you and help you um, figure out what collection alternative you actually qualify for, and they would be the ones presenting that during the hearing, not you. So that's definitely something to think about if your situation already has you far enough where you need to be thinking about a CDP hearing or the equivalency. But as I tell you in other episodes, even if it's not me, you need to make sure that you take the information that you got from this episode, find somebody that can help you because back taxes shouldn't ruin your life. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen today. I'd like to thank Jim Ray Consulting Services for helping me get this message out to you. I hope you found the information helpful. Did you know one in 50 people have a tax problem? Please share this episode with your friends and family because you never know who may need help. Again, thanks for listening. Hey, just as a reminder, this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. It provides a framework and possible solutions for solving your tax problems, but it is not legally binding. Please consult your tax professional regarding your specific tax situation.